This is the JBL audio system out of my 2020 Tundra TRD Pro. So if that's in my basement, what do we have in the truck now? So I wanted to keep the head unit the same. Uh, I wanted that factory look. And it's already got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, USB support. Uh, it just doesn't have a CD player, which I don't really use. So uh, I'm keeping the uh, factory head unit for now, but that might change. And uh, I will explain why here in a minute. So one of the most common posts you'll see on a lot of the forums, message boards, and Toyota Facebook pages is why does the JBL system suck? And I wouldn't say so much that it sucks, but it is pretty lackluster and compared to other uh, high-end cars, their uh, high-end audio packages, the JBL system, even the premium package, is a little lacking. My 2015 Infiniti Q50 had a Bose system in it and I'm not really a big fan of Bose, but that system sounded so much better than the factory system that comes in the uh, Toyota Tundra. So this is a 2020 Toyota Tundra TRD Pro. It came with the premium JBL sound system. And what you saw at the beginning of the video was the amplifier and speakers, most of the speakers out of that system. I opted to keep the dash speakers installed, but I have them disconnected currently. So they are not connected. And because of that, uh, I do have a couple of issues. So when I'm using Android Auto or uh, CarPlay and I'm using the map feature, the turn-by-turn -turn directions actually come out of that center speaker. Uh, so that is not working right now. I still get uh, the map and music. And what's funny is the music will actually mute, but then there's just no audio when the voice plays to tell you to turn left or turn right or whatever directions they're giving you. So let's get to the meat and potatoes of it. Why would you switch out the audio system? Well, the amplifier, as you saw, is pretty small and sad. <laughs> so we swapped that out with this kit from Tech 12 Volts Online, who makes these packages specifically for the Tundra. Uh, he's got packages for the double cab, the crew max, the older versions of the Tundra, the uh, 24, 2014, fit 2015 and up. So he's got uh, packages for everything. So I'll give you, I took some pictures before I installed this stuff. So basically it consists of a Kenwood amplifier, uh, Kenwood sub subwoofers, um, and also uh, these Hertz K170 speakers. Uh, they're six and three quarter component speakers. So that means that the tweeter and the woofer part of the, the mid-range part of the speaker are separates. And that's what you'll need if you're in a newer model Tundra. You've got in the door panels up by the mirror is where your tweeter is mounted. And then in the door panel down by the kick plate by your foot is where the uh, main speaker part is mounted. And then of course the subwoofer is gonna replace the factory subwoofer in the rear uh, behind the back seat. So the main reason I wanted to switch this out was just the poor audio quality. The JBL system can get loud, but it doesn't sound good. The quality is not good. There's not a lot of dynamic range there. It's very mid-centric centered. Uh, so what I mean by that is there's not a lot of bass, there's not a lot of treble. Everything is just kind of focused on the mids. So if you listen to audiobooks or um, stuff like that or podcasts, it's going to sound great. But if you want to sound, listen to music, uh, especially music that's been well recorded modernly, uh, you want that dynamic range. You get a lot of bass, a lot of mids, a lot of trebles. You want to hear all that. Uh, you're not going to hear that on the factory system. I mean, it's going to be there, but it's going to sound like a boombox from 1985. Uh, you could probably just replace the amplifier and get a, a pretty good boost in sound quality. But what I'm going to tell you is the first thing I did, and I'll post a link up here in the card, uh, is I replaced the subwoofer with a eight inch kicker comp subwoofer that just replaced the factory subwoofer. That's it. No amplifier changes, no nothing. And that gave me the ability to get um, a little bit of a clearer sound without that bass distorting out. Uh, but let me tell you, that 
that that amplifier in the truck is not powerful enough to really drive that sub and so you really have to turn the bass all the way up almost to hear any bass at all and uh, once you do that you know the sound just doesn't sound right you can't uh, get the equalizer to sound good and it just it just still sounds poor I think the Hertz K170 speakers are decent they are uh, if you buy those separately, those are $99 a pair online, and I think they're okay. They're a decent quality speaker. They're probably twice as good as the factory speaker, but there's definitely better stuff out there. So I don't want you to think that this is the best package you can get for your Tundra, but for the money spent, it is probably the best package you can get. For So I'm going to do some comparison uh, shots here from before and after. Uh, just using a, a sound level meter and I'm going to use the exact same audio files so I'm using an mp3 version of the audio file a FLAC version of the audio file and uh, I'm just going to bounce back and forth and you can see there's really not much difference in the audio uh, the, the volume but there is a, a pretty good difference in the quality so I'm going to say if you really are uh, interested in audio quality you definitely want to have those audio files in FLAC uh, it's a lossless format, and you're going to hear that audio file just like it is on the disc. You're going to hear that whole full dynamic range. You're not going to get anything missing. Uh, even a really good or well-recorded uh, MP3 that's 320 kilobits per second. The reason those file sizes are so small is because they're missing data, right? And so those files are compressed or they are uh, lacking bits and pieces and so there's an algorithm in there that removes bits and pieces of the file now your ears don't notice it so much uh, especially when you're listening through a bluetooth speaker or something like that but as soon as you start increasing the audio quality you start to hear a difference and so especially in cymbals crashing or uh, high-pitched sounds like guitar solos and stuff like that or maybe a female's high-pitched voice you're going to notice a difference um, if you care about such things. If you don't care about such things, I don't know why you're watching this video. Okay, so um, let's do those comparison shots now and let you see how much different the audio quality is. Now, I don't know if this uh, microphone that I've got connected to my GoPro is going to pick up the audio differences because obviously I'm recording the audio you're playing it back through YouTube on who knows what. It could be a laptop, could be headphones, could be, uh, you know, your sound system. So it's always going to sound different coming from YouTube than it does sitting in this truck. Unfortunately, because of copyright strike, I had to remove the audio files from these clips. But what you're going to see is with the volume at 30, the first original stereo is hitting at about 70 to 75 decibels on the sound pressure level meter. And then on the new system here, you'll see the exact same file here in FLAC hitting at 80 to 85 decibels. And uh, what you're not going to hear, though, unfortunately, is the, the sound quality uh, improvement, how much deeper the bass is and how much better it sounds. And then we have an MP3 file here at 320 kilobits at the same volume level, still hitting at the low 80s to mid 80s on the decibel meter. The biggest thing that I did is put Dynamat throughout the truck. We did Dynamat on the floor. We did Dynamat uh, behind the back seat. We did Dynamat on the inside of the door skins. And we did Dynamat on the inside of the door. So each door has two layers of Dynamat, plus the floor, plus the back of the truck. I did not do the roof of the truck because I didn't really want to tear the, hair, the headliner out, but I think if I wanted to go overboard, I had some Dynamat left over. Uh, if I really want to go overboard, maybe uh, this summer, uh, I might Dynamat the roof as well. Um, but that's the hugest difference for me. And uh, hearing the difference there with uh, the Dynamat in, is massive and it's it just increases the the quietness of the ride of the, the vehicle and it just makes the vehicle feel and sound more solid I feel like you're driving a uh an eighty thousand dollar audi or mercedes versus driving a uh, fifty thousand dollar truck 
So now that you guys have had an opportunity to hear and, and see the difference, uh, what are your thoughts on that? Like I'm thinking there's a pretty good possibility I will eventually upgrade the door speakers, the Hertz uh, component separates to something a little nicer. I think the amplifier is absolutely fine for this. I, I can't really turn the volume up over 30, 35, even when I'm driving. That's my thoughts on that, you know, and I think quite honestly, to get the audio upgraded from those Hertz speakers, you would probably have to spend considerably more money. I mean, those speakers are about $99 a pair. If you go out and spend $150 or $200 a pair to replace those, you're probably not gonna get that big of a jump in audio quality. I think you're gonna have to spend four to $500 per set, per pair. So we're talking about another thousand dollars possibly uh, on top of the money already spent. And at this point to me, I don't feel that it's worth it. I feel like what I have right now is pretty good. The subwoofers are fine. Those Kenwood Exelon subwoofers, they hit nicely. The amplifier does a good job of driving them. Been having some issues with the head unit. So I actually made a video uh, regarding this um, a few months ago, uh, not having the truck too long. Uh, what would happen is that if you s drove the car and then stopped the car and then started it again, you would get no audio out of the head unit. It's almost like the head unit didn't boot up properly. And that was happening maybe one out of every 10 to 15 times I would start the truck. Not very often, it was a little annoying, but not that big of a deal. Well, now as time has gone by and I've driven the truck more, that seems to be happening maybe a third of the time. So one out of every three to four times that I drive the truck, there's no audio out of the head unit. And now that's becoming an issue because it's annoying, it's frustrating, it's embarrassing if you have people with you. You have a nice brand new truck and there's something broken with it, right? So obviously it's not a major issue with the vehicle, but still, those little things like that are frustrating. Now, I got my oil changed, uh, some service done through Toyota uh, about two weeks ago. And at that time, I mentioned to them that this was happening. They told me there was a software update for the head unit. And so they applied that software update. And the first eight or 10 times I drove the truck, it worked great. So I thought it was fixed. And then recently, this happened. So you can see I'm adjusting the audio volume. There's absolutely no audio whatsoever. Audio off. Audio back on. Nothing. So we're just going to stop it. I'm going to give it about 10 seconds and then restart the truck. And you'll see my foot on the brake here. I'm not touching anything on the system here it will probably have audio now. It seems to happen about a third of the time now. There it is. And now it works. And so there you can see it's, it's starting to happen again. It's not as often, but it's still happening. I think it's an issue with the head unit. So if you're not aware, the head unit is actually made by Panasonic. Um, if you remove the head unit for the truck, you'll see there's a sticker inside that says it's produced by Panasonic. Um, I don't know if I should get this replaced under warranty at this point, or just kind of maybe just replace the head unit with something aftermarket. So. I'm looking for your thoughts on that too. Uh, what is a good replacement aftermarket head unit? I really don't like those ones that come out of the dash that look like they're not part of the dash or they sit up higher. And um, I, like, I like it being recessed into the dash. I like that factory look. And that's why I was hoping to keep this head unit. 
I'm happy with it, the size of the screen and uh, and how the navigation and all that stuff works. So I may just get it replaced under warranty and then if the replacement has the same issue, uh, I think I'll go with aftermarket. But let me know your thoughts on that. Like what, what, aftermarket, uh, what aftermarket head unit would you use? What, uh, what, what door speakers would you upgrade to other than the Hertz? Uh, quite honestly, I'm happy with everything else. I think the Kenwood amplifier is fine, like I said. Um, previously, I've used an Alpine uh, PDX9, I think it was, and that amplifier was amazing. Um, if I had to replace the amplifier, I'd use something similar to that, but the, the specs on that amplifier and this one are so similar. They're so close that I don't think I would go through the trouble. I, I really don't. So unless this amplifier blows up or something happens, um, I'll be keeping that. Now, the only other upgrade I'm gonna be doing soon is uh, re probably replacing the factory remote start. I'm, I'm just not thrilled with it. The uh, license that I had ran out after a year. And so now my, not only does the app not work, but the key fob doesn't work either. And so that's probably going to be happening very soon. So let me know what your thoughts are, guys. Do you think this upgrade is worth it? Replacing the audio system in here, I'm thrilled with it. I think it sounds great. Road trips are going to be so much more enjoyable. Uh, so that, that's my feeling on it. It was definitely worth the money spent. Um, installing it was, uh, was not that difficult. I think it took an entire day. Uh, to get the installation done and everything just fit right away and worked so everything's plug and play no issues with cutting wires or anything like that I didn't have to do any cutting no splicing um, the kit that they send you uh, I'll put a link uh, down below in the description for that particular kit uh, he does also sell a kit that replaces the three dash speakers and I believe that comes with an eight channel amp I'm, I'm not hundred percent sure uh, to drive everything off of the up updated amplifier Definitely worth looking into though. Let me know your thoughts, guys. Appreciate you. Thank you for uh, watching the channel and uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks.